Welcome back to another episode of What's the Move. My name is Aleko, and today I'm bringing you a very cool play that was made by Tice at Seat Story Cup number eight against Zixo. Uh, this play was brought to my attention by Reddit user A New Way. I hope I'm saying that close to correct. I'm not going to bring up their whole comment on the screen because it kind of spoils a bit of the play. But nonetheless, thank you very much for bringing this really interesting play to my attention. Uh, as you can see here, Tice is on his turn five, and every single card in his hand is playable in this situation. Of course, he would like to be able to use the cards in his hand to clear the board because he's staring down 11 damage the following turn, as well as the threat of Cobalt Scalebane continuing to apply additional pressure and buff up any minions that Zixo would be able to play on the following turn. The cards that Tice has in hand right now are Duskbreaker, Draconid Operative, Twilight Drake, Silence, Divine Spirit, and Cabal Talon Priest. Uh, the Divine Spirit was found off of a Shadow Vision, so there still should be two remaining in his deck. So, what's the move? Oh, quickly. I wonder. So as you can see, Tice opts to go for a line that I think very few people would have opted to go for in this situation. He plays a Cabal Talon Priest, which buffs up the Northshire Cleric, and he plays a Divine Spirit on the Cabal Talon Priest to leave him with two 8 health minions. So why does Tice make this play? Uh, why not play one of the three dragons that he has in his hand to try to play to the board a little more? Uh, so before we dive into why this play makes so much sense actually, when you take a look at it, uh, let's see why the other plays are not as strong by taking a look at the board. Tice is staring down a 6-2 and a 5-5, and both of these actually match up really well at what Tice is able to present. Of course, the 5-5 can kill his 1-5 if it doesn't receive any buffs, and both the Draconid Operative and the Twilight Drake would be coming down with 6 health, which could be immediately traded into by the 6-2. Of course, Tice could use a Silence on the 6-2 so that both of his 6 health minions could potentially survive the turn, but this really wouldn't be buying him much in the long run. The 3-2 would still be on board and could potentially still kill off a 6 health minion if Zixo has either a Eagle Horn Bow in hand or a Houndmaster. Uh, the Houndmaster could of course be used to buff up the 3-2 and the Candle Shot could finish off the rest of the 6 health. If that happens, the 5-5 Cobalt Scalebane could then attack into the 1-5 and what we would be looking at is a board that was being dominated by Zixo, an empty board from Tice, and not a lot of options going forward to actually win him the game. So both of these six health minions seem to be losing plays uh, because they are really not going to be buying Tice anything in the way of board presence, uh, given the texture of the current board and the kind of cards that Zixo is very likely to have in hand. This leaves us with the third dragon that can be played this turn, which is a Duskbreaker. Uh, the Duskbreaker would handle the 6-2 and deal two damage to the 5-5, but the 5-5 would still be in play after that. A 1-5 isn't going to kill a 5-2 after the 3 damage is dealt, so any minion in Zixo's hand is going to be able to come down and get buffed up by the Cobalt Scalebane. Of course, it's highly likely that Zixo has a minion in his hand, seeing as there are only 2 spells in his deck in addition to a handful of weapons. What Tice would like to be able to do is use the Duskbreaker on a future turn to clean up whatever minion gets buffed up by a Cobalt Scalebane. Uh, for example, if Zixo had a bear shark in his hand, a Duskbreaker would do a great job at coming down and cleaning that up before it presented any kind of real problem. So, when we take a look at the three different dragons that Tice is capable of playing this turn, none of them really seem like winning lines. All of them just seem like they're playing something for the sake of playing something, and they're not really marching him any closer towards his goal of actually winning this game. So how can Tice win this game? Uh, whether it be through the Divine Spirit Interfire combo or simply by assembling a threatening board of dragons, the only way he's going to be able to win is if he gets control over the board. The only way that he's going to be able to ever get control over this board is if he can kill that Cobalt Scalebane. Duskbreaker can deal 3 damage to it, but he has to find a way to deal those final 2 points. He's got one point from the Northshire Cleric, but that can become two points from the Northshire if he is capable of making it survive an attack from the Cobalt Scalebane. All of a sudden, it's starting to sound like we have a plan. Find a way for the Northshire Cleric to survive the turn, 
and entice the Cobalt Scalebane to make an attack into it, and then use the Northshire Cleric on the following turn to deal the final point of damage so that everything can be cleaned up by a Duskbreaker. Tice actually has several ways of accomplishing this. Uh, he could either Divine Spirit or heal the Northshire Cleric, of course, drawing a card in the process. Uh, either way he does that, he's going to want to play the Cabal Town Priest this turn. So he leads things off by playing the Cabal Town Priest, and then he elects to go for the Divine Spirit on the Town Priest instead of using his hero power to draw a card from the Northshire Cleric. The reason I like the Divine Spirit more than the Heal this turn is because it sells the bluff of having a potential Divine Spirit Inner Fire combo in hand much better than if Tice were to just heal this turn. Remember, the entire plan for Tice to clear this board is contingent on the Cobalt Scalebane making an attack into one of Tice's minions. So if Tice doesn't give Zixo enough of a reason to believe that he has this combo in hand, he's just going to go face, which will put Tice in a pretty rough spot. As you can see, Zixo does respect the combo, ends up making the trades for Tice, which allows Tice to clear the board with a Duskbreaker and eventually seize control over this game. With the benefit of hindsight, and of course the fact that I've analyzed this play for hours on end while assembling this video, I think it's fair to say that Zixo made a mistake in attacking into the Northshire Cleric, or in the very least in trading uh, in the way that he did. But sometimes you need your opponent to make mistakes in order to win the game. What Tice was very smart to recognize was that making any of these standard play to the board ho-hum dragon plays this turn was not going to put himself in a position to win. And the only way that he could win is if he could force his opponent to respect a combo that he didn't actually have. And maybe if their opponent makes some bad mistakes going forward. This play set his opponent up to make some mistakes, whereas playing a 5-6 really did not set his opponent up to make any mistakes. Uh, this is what makes this play from Tice so brilliant, and of course what makes him one of the best players in the world. So before we go, I just wanted to wrap this up by kind of explaining uh, what goes into a play like this and what kinds of situations these plays are most effective in. The reason that I think in this particular situation it was best for Tice to represent cards in his hand that he didn't have, or to bluff his opponent Zixo, is because all of the obvious moves weren't leading him to a winning situation. Even though he relies on his opponent to make a mistake or to make a bad read for this line to be a good one, the chances of his opponent making that mistake or making that bad read and in turn leading him to a winning situation are higher than the chances of him getting to a winning situation if he were to simply play a card like Draconid Operative. Typically, these situations only crop up when you are quite behind. Uh, you really don't need or want to be bluffing your opponent to gain small margins when you are ahead or when the game is at parity. Uh, it's best to be making these kinds of risky decisions when you need to take risks in order to win, not when you can win by making safer, more standard plays. Thanks again to Reddit user NewY for bringing this to my attention, and I'll see you guys next week.